Welcome to another episode. No, I don't know. But um, here are three great project ideas for the intermediate to advanced coder. So they are in order of difficulty. Um, Minecraft paper. A custom text based MUD, which basically means um, multi-user dungeon or to where you talk with other players, interact with other players based on text. And lastly, RuneScape server, private RuneScape server development, RuneScape private servers. So um, RuneScape private servers is the most difficult because it requires the deepest understanding of Java and a high time commitment to get good at it. The text-based MUD probably will take you a month to really get into, you know, RSPS, RuneScape Private Development, will probably take you maybe six months to get into Minecraft Paper, a few weeks. Just do it every day for a few hours. So let's start with Minecraft Paper as an introduction. And if you're not interested in Minecraft, you could skip ahead. But just know that this is basically for the intermediate to advanced coder. So with all of these, you can integrate web design using another language or even Java Spring because this is more for Java. But um, the issue is uh, with Java, it's one of the harder languages to create a website in. So I don't really recommend it. It's better to write it in Node Express. Uh, that's the easiest one that I've ever encountered so far. Uh, you could also do database design. So uh, what I mean by that is um, you can add uh, any database to all three of these and it'll work so and it'll be good practice and sometimes you need to do that especially for the mud um, and you could use any other library in Java with all of these so when you learn one of these you know you go to Minecraft paper you can move to mud next after a few months of doing that you know because you're better at Java once you learn how to do a multi-user dungeon in, with text uh, and you've done that for another three months actually it'll it'll build into RuneScape private development because RuneScape private development essentially is like a high level mud you know it just has graphics in it so if you were to get really good at making a text-based mud you could basically do the RuneScape thing a lot easier so let's start off with Minecraft um, I made a few plugins these look it looks complicated but it's not this is because I have like uh, let's see um, one two three four different plugins in one uh, project and it was really really um, just not organized so it's not it's not that not that tough so let's say you create a new project uh, and it starts you off at Java but you can move to Minecraft and uh, the one I recommend is paper it's the most um, optimized from what I hear um, I don't know if it's if that's absolutely true but that's what I was told but uh, with IntelliJ which is my favorite IDE you can do any of these uh, and there and it has some built-in functionality it's already linked up to the API so what I mean by API is the is the library just just you know keep it simple um, because each of these is just a library okay like buckets a library uh, spigots a library paper is a library sponge is a library forge is a library all of these are libraries fabric and um, so yeah this would be the easiest and paper would be very easy all you have to do is, is literally just google things like you know how to damage player paper you know, uh, so let's see, uh, players not taking damage, paper spigot. So you would basically just Google over and over and it's better to put the function. I don't even know the functions, but you would basically do that over and over just Googling things and then you would add it to the code, you know, uh, like you get the inventory of the player and you remove an item right and uh, essentially what happens is the more stuff you learn on Google the more you stack all of these functions in your mind and you don't like memorize it hard but you uh, just keep using them over and over and eventually you get really really good at doing these things and you become essentially like a 
like a like a creator, like a like a lord, you know, <laughs> like a like a god, you know, without sounding heathenistic there. But you um, eventually just get really good at it, and it's 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 pretty darn cool. Okay, so uh, next ba next one would be the custom text based mud. So I made one in in C in in C plus plus, but I I really can't show it right now. But basically, you would open up a command line, and you would do something like start or like you know uh, mud dot jar or you know Java jar mud dot jar. You run it, and then it starts a prompt, and it's like hello adventurer, you know what what can I call you? And the idea of a mud is it connects to a server and it has a bunch of clients an infinite number of clients because it's just text it's going to be really efficient and each client connects to the server and then um, it creates a new thread it creates like a new program within itself that's what a thread is and then um, you basically interact with the server as the clients and each thread within the server is uh, being managed in that program. So you have to make two different programs for a MUD. You have to make the server and you have to make the client. And how they communicate, usually, because you have a choice of a bunch of different architectures, but the, the easiest one, in my opinion, is packet packet-based architecture. So what that means, uh, the client sends like a number to a number and a string to um, the server like number zero would be login oh uh, ja warrior is logging in right so zero ja warrior and then the password right and so you send that to the server and it's really really easy you could get started you know it sounds hard but it's not it's actually pretty easy so if i were you i would look up echo server and you could do this in any language but right now we're talking about java you look up echo server um, let's see with the space. You would look up Echo Server in all of GitHub, and you would go to Java, and you would basically find one here that has both a client and a server. So I have one here already, and when you click in it, main is the uh, client, and Echo is the server. And just take a look at how short it is. This is like all you need. You have to un uh, comment that, but you essentially get an input from the user and you put a, a while loop around it you output it to the network right the socket network it's sent to um, the server okay and then in the server you accept it I think I just reversed it but you accept it and then uh, that's it right and then you you echo it back and um, this is like the very basic of the packet architecture. I don't even know what to call it of MUDs. So, and that's essentially how RuneScape works. It all you're doing is sending like a number and a string, and that's it. And you have like 50 different numbers. So you have zero login, one global message, two movement, three, um, you know, attacking a an, a, an NPC for attack a player five pick up an item right and the more you add to it and you make your own framework it gets really really fun so you could do this in any language python c plus plus javascript and you can make a website out of this so once you learn how to do a custom text-based mud and, it, and remember it's a little bit more difficult than minecraft paper um and the, the the very basic, like the very beginning, the foundation of it should be an echo server, but um, it opens up a lot of options for you uh, when it comes to programming because you begin to understand networking, you begin to understand a little bit more about game development, object-oriented programming, you can integrate uh, database design, web design into it, and it's it's just a really fun project, and if you're a computer science major, a little more advanced because this is more an advanced stuff um, you could use it as a semester long project for those software engineering classes um, so yeah there are plenty of options with that uh, the last one the toughest of the three but also the most fun would be RuneScape private development so um, 
I am part of a RuneScape private server. And just to give you an idea, um, take a look at this right here. So uh, this is the network. This is packets. Okay. So remember I said the packet is basically a number and a string. That's all that's being sent. And that's all these are. Each of these right here, like, okay, um, NPC update. You update an NPC with a, uh, with like a, let's see, here it is. Okay. And all it is is a number and a string. It looks different, but that's, that's really all it is. So set, set system update. This is RuneScape private server development. Each of these is the same. And this is an already finished, um, already finished framework. So, um, and, and RuneScape private development is tougher because uh, it requires a deeper understanding of Java. It requires a um, higher time commitment to learn. There's a very steep learning curve. Once you get past it, I mean, you are so like, it's just so fun, so cool to be able to edit RuneScape at any year. But uh, just to, just so you could see, all of these are uh, part of the server and this does not include the client. So the client is even bigger than the uh, server. Um, so all of this right here, you know, you, you have to learn like every single uh, class to really begin to start becoming proficient in RuneScape development. And it's just super, super cool. So I really recommend if you're more advanced and you already know about networking or even if you're not and you still want to just learn RuneScape stuff, this is real good. You just have to have uh, a deep understanding and a high time commitment like six months or so. And you have the option of creating your own framework like this all by yourself. And you also have the option of following someone else's, which is what I recommend. Uh, and there are a bunch, a bunch of frameworks. So like if you wanted to start with uh, RuneScape Classic, uh, which is like 2001 to 2002 or three. This would be it right here. RuneScape Open RuneScape Classic is one. So you can choose any year that you want from RuneScape and start trying to develop it. Um, and this one's very n low intensity. The code base is a lot smaller and it's open source. Okay. Uh, then you have 2009 Scape, which is later. It's more of an old school thing. Uh, but you have uh, summoning, and uh, so yeah, that one is right here. This is their web, their website. It's open source, so you can just add to it and follow them. Another one is uh, 2012, uh, Darken. Uh, that's the one that I'm on, and uh, their website is pretty darn cool. Here you go. Um, and yeah, that would be three different. Uh, projects you can basically go from 2001 to 2021 in RuneScape private development muds you make your own framework you learn networking it gets really really cool because you learn object-oriented programming you learn so much with the mud Minecraft paper is a lot easier easier to get started with and it's built into IntelliJ right so remember you just file new project Minecraft and you do these IntelliJ is my favorite IDE okay I hope this will be helpful to you. The video was a little bit longer than I thought it would be, but um, this is some exciting stuff. Once you get to the intermediate to advanced um, uh, coding levels of understanding Java, you can really start doing some fun things. You're no longer in that beginning stage where you're barely learning classes or um, other things, right? So yeah, man, I hope you guys Enjoy your coding journey.